My name's Christine, and today we're going to talk about the three different types of sewing fails you will encounter when you begin sewing. When you make a mistake while sewing, you need to be able to determine if it can be fixed, if it can't be fixed, and if it doesn't need to be fixed to determine how much of a sewing fail you've committed. When you first start sewing, you're going to make a lot of mistakes that can be fixed. The most common fixable mistakes you will make when you begin sewing are sewing in fasteners wrong, such as zippers, buttons, and waistbands. These types of mistakes are really easy to correct because you can always take them out and install them properly a second time. But you might also run into the much more frustrating dilemma of totally screwing up the piece you're working on, but also having enough fabric left over to recreate it. And in those situations, you just need to pause Take a deep breath and restart your project. When you're sewing, it's very important that you pay attention to the little details because the more details you pay attention to, the less mistakes you will make and the less sewing fails you will make overall. The second type of mistake you will make when you begin learning how to sew are mistakes that can't be fixed. These mistakes might include cutting a hole in your garment while you're sewing it, mismatching your stripes or plaids, or cutting the wrong size pattern out of what little fabric you had. These unfixable mistakes are your true sewing fails because oftentimes you can't wear the product you've made and there's no way to fix it to make it wearable. But STEM projects are learning projects and some mistakes you have to make so that you learn not to make them again. And remember that if you ever commit a total sewing fail that cannot be fixed, you can always stitch rip that sucker apart and use the fabric for something else. The third type of mistake you're going to make while learning how to sew are mistakes that might be fixable and might not be fixable, but either way, you don't need to fix them. Sewing mistakes that don't really need to be fixed, such as a wavy hemline or a fit problem that doesn't prevent you from wearing the garment, aren't technically sewing fails, but they might make you feel like they are because you know you could have done better. The biggest thing that might help you determine whether a sewing fail is something that needs to be fixed or not is to compare the clothing you make to store-bought ready-to-wear garments. When I purchased this dress from Macy's, I had to fix the zipper because it was sewn on with terrible tension. I had to sew the front of it closed because it gapped way too much. And they didn't even properly stabilize this light flimsy fabric. And not only is the hem wavy, but it has also started to pull apart after only three uses. When compared to ready to wear trash, a lot of your sewing fails might still be wearable and you don't even have to fix them. One other big thing I want to point out is that you are your own biggest critic and a lot of other people won't even notice the little mistakes you make. Your biggest sewing fail might be somebody else's biggest sewing accomplishment. Take this sweater I'm wearing as an example. Every seam on this sweater is wavy. One of the buttons cracked off and I had to glue it back on. And I drafted this the same way I would have a woven pattern because it was the first time I ever worked with knits. And I ended up having to re-sew the front down because it just gapped horribly and didn't work well for knit fabric. But I've had way more compliments on this sweater over the years than negative feedback because most people aren't even going to notice. The mistakes in the front are a little bit noticeable with a light colored dress underneath, but when I wear black underneath this, there's really no way of noticing it unless you get up real close. 
So I dare you to wear your own sewing fails out of the house to see if anybody even notices because chances are they won't and you're going to really like wearing the clothing you've made. I have many more sewing fails to share with you in the future, some that are wearable and some that aren't, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos. Leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and make sure you leave a comment down below to let me know what your sewing fails have been when you first started sewing. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you guys next week.